Still no bike, so I've taken up a spot of painting. I am struggling slightly though with the flesh tones. What do you think? Ooh. Hello, mate. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man. How are you? I? No, no, that would be awesome. No bother? Fantastic. Cheers, mate. That'd be brilliant. Be there in about 20 minutes. There's the key for the CRF450L. Don't break it. The very nice people at Newcastle Motorcycles have lent me this. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. It's too expensive, oil changes are too frequent, and it's only 25 horsepower. But let's just put that to one side for a moment. It's getting dark, so I'm gonna go to the pub for a quick pint. We'll catch up on this tomorrow. I've done about 60 or 70 miles on the CRF 450L and what stands out straight away is how light this bike is. When you're off road, this bike is so much fun. You can literally ride it almost anywhere. Now, you've got to get somewhere first and that inevitably will involve riding on the road. It's not the greatest, let's be honest. I know that's not what it's been designed to do, but that seat is like a plank of mahogany. There's no wind protection and there aren't even any hand guards. So riding on the road is not a pleasurable experience, but when you do find a track or a trail somewhere, this thing is great fun. You're looking at a bike from a pedigree motocross stable, so don't expect many features on the 450L. There's certainly no ABS or traction control, there's no rev counter, gear indicator, or even a fuel gauge. Expect 80 to 100 miles from that 7.5 litre tank. Well, lots of fuel stops will give you a backside arrest. The swing arm is longer. This is for better road stability. That cover is there to dampen the engine noise, but it should give some protection. Mind, I do like the way it sounds. But what about the elephants in the shed? The three big issues everybody's talking about. Number one, the horsepower. The bike does make 25 horsepower. Now, on some sites overseas, we're seeing figures near a 40. So there's a bit of confusion here. In the dark corners of the internet, some people are suggesting this is down to European legislation on emissions. So in other words, the airflow has been restricted. That's brought the emissions down, so it's road legal, but it's also brought the power down. Now, some bright spark has suggested, well, if that's the case, why don't we buy the plumbing from a 450X, fit it to the L, and there's all your horsepower back. Now, I don't know if this is true, but that sounds far too straightforward to me, and I wouldn't suggest you try that at all. It's a very silly idea. Anyway, number two, oil changes. Yeah, a bit frequent every 600 miles. I have heard of people pushing this to near a thousand. I could probably live with that. It's not a deal breaker to me. And let's face it, it's only a 10 or a 15 minute job. Number three, the price. Yeah, I know, nine and a half grand. It is a lot. For my skill set, this is a little bit much for me. It's great fun, don't get me wrong, but a lot of it's wasted on me. I'm not doing wheelies through fields or jumping over hills. Looking back at what we did in Spain, I don't think I could have done that on this bike. 
It just hasn't got the legs on the road. It's too uncomfortable. There's a few sort of rider things missing for me for motorcycle touring, but that's not what it's designed for. This is designed for the Trans Euro Trail or join the TRF and find a load of byways you can ride off road. I would like to thank Newcastle Motorcycles for lending me this. It's very kind of them. I know, Graham, I haven't broken it. Does the 450L bridge the gap between the 250L and the 1000L the Africa Twin? For me, sadly, it doesn't. It shouldn't put you off trying one. It's a very well-built, capable motorcycle. But for me, it's a little too single purpose. So back to the drawing board. You know, in fairness, it's not that far off, is it?